Hi viewers, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint picture frame molding and its surrounding narrow areas. A dark blue against a light blue. I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. And I'm going to show you the interim steps with caulking, taping, brushing, and rolling in order to achieve what you're looking at in the video now. Not an easy task, but you can do it. Trust me. Friends, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. In fact, if you use my hashtag, Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, they'll be sure to give you a 10% off at your checkout. No matter how much you order, they have a wide selection of wallpaper. Check it out. Tell them I said hello and enjoy your discount. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the video. Hi, viewers. Before we get into the meat of the video, well, this home is for sale. And with the permission of the homeowner, I'm here to tell you that it's almost ready for sale. And it's located at 1644 Acadia Harbor Place in Brandon, Florida. Check it out. It'll be up for sale shortly. Maybe you want it. You'll have first dibs on it. Tell them Spencer Colgan is wallpaper sent you. Thanks for watching my videos. Now check it out how we made this place beautiful. And who knows, maybe you'll wind up living in it. So I sprayed all of the base trim and all of this picture framing and the chair rail. This wall is a different blue than this wall down here. And the crown molding is getting another coat of white. Now, let me back up and ask the viewers, how do you go about painting what's in your camera right now? What's on your screen? So I just took a picture of what's in your screen and I'll use it for the thumbnail for this video. What do you paint first here? Let's get that crown in there. So it's a fair assessment of what the video will explain. Now you can, you can go ahead theoretically and tell me, spray this, spray this, spray all of that and spray this. Do you realize how that would start costing you a lot of time? The reason why I sprayed this, this is very time consuming to brush as you saw in a previous video. And anyway, this takes a lot of time brushing up like this on both sides and then doing all of this. You're talking about hours of work when you can literally do it in about an hour with a sprayer, the entire room. Okay. So we saved a ton of time with spraying this picture framing. But here's the thing, what you may not realize is sometimes you have to suffer a little. There's no way to do this easily. This, the space in here, see this? And so you can tape this stuff up now and go ahead and spray it. But you'd be wasting all of that time to tape all of that up. What we have to do here, if you want to do it the way a painter would do it, is we're just going to tape up the sides of this. Just here, all along the outside, and just paint it with a brush and roller if we can get in. Now, I'm not going to be able to get in with a roller, but uh, you could. You can get yourself a two-inch roller and get in there. I don't like a two-inch roller. Our hands are used to four inches and more. So with two inches, I'm probably going to skip a lot because it's just not a roller that we use often. So I'm opting to paint it. The, the brush is heavier to get in there, so you can feel the brush going in. But if you want, you can use a two inch roller and, and you'll do fine. So, so after we get that little uh, maze painted, now you can, you can make an argument, I can spray this. You would then mask off the chair railing down, tape your plastic to the floor, 
and then you can go ahead and spray it and then just cover your ceiling from the crown over to here. And yeah, you can, you can go ahead and spray that. I'm proceeding to paint the crown with a brush. Okay, right here. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna paint this. I'm going to caulk against this green paint, this green tape here, seal the gap between the crown and the ceiling and just go ahead. Now you say, Spencer, it's white. Like my helper said, it's white, who cares? Well, I'll tell you what, when you come in here and you look up and you see white crown paint on your ceiling, you're gonna say, hey, that's not professional. Now I'm gonna tell you already, this is not professional either. I didn't do this. I'm coming in after the homeowner said, hey, do me a favor, paint this place. We tried, we just want you to do it. But here's where, you know, like if I'm, if I'm coming to buy this house, I'm gonna say, okay, I don't like that up there. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tape my crown and paint that shiny. You, do you see what I'm pointing out there? You see the, the first shiny thing you see? Or here's our ceiling, right? And now the first shiny thing, you see that? I don't like that, it's uneven. But what that is, is caulking and I, it, it, just, it just looks sloppy. But anyway, you, you would tape the top part of that crown to get rid of that and then bring in your ceiling paint. Oftentimes though, your, your, your uh, customer doesn't have the ceiling paint. So, I am opting to brush this rather than spray it because I don't want to have to paint this whole ceiling unnecessarily. I'm not painting the ceiling. They're selling the house. I'm just painting from here down. Okay, let's get to it. So as you can see, I chose a wall doesn't matter where you begin and i began painting the outside of the trim with a four inch purdy p-u-r-d-y paintbrush medium stiff you could have started inside of the picture framing i decided to paint outside what you're seeing is the equivalent of yellow frog tape. That lavender colored tape is the same quality as yellow frog tape. It's low tack. It's designed for newly painted surfaces. It's designed for fragile surfaces such as uh, low quality cabinetry the surfaces of which you don't wish to pull off with stronger tape. Believe it or not, you can rip the laminate off of a cabinet, a cheap cabinet, with strong masking tape. You don't want to do that. So as I'm going along here, I am putting my first coat with a brush very carefully. Now, this being the lower part of the wall is very tedious because you're on your knees for hours. And not only that, you're trying to keep the paint off of the, off of the chair railing, which is what you see me doing here. But also, the tape around the the molding is time consuming not only time consuming but a, a real tedious task because your finished product and the straightness of your finished product depends on how diligent you are in getting that paint tape straight i call it the paint tape that painter's tape. You see where I'm doing the brush right now? If my tape is not exactly along the edge or the corner where the wall meets the trim, 
it's going to look so bad because you're using a dark paint color against white trim. So any deviation in a straight line is going to show extremely bad. It's going to be a prominent mistake. And so the hardest part, the hardest task is applying that tape right there where you see my brush hitting it. Because you're working with a very small lip on that trim. Obviously the outside, you see to the right of your screen there, about three quarters along the way, you see those vertical strips. That's easier. You have more meat, so to speak, against which to put your tape. But where you see me brushing right there, it's a small lip. At most, it's three sixteenths of an inch. To get the tape in there, and then to come to that corner, literally, each, each one of them can take up to a minute and a half to install it properly. If you go too quickly, you'll mess up on the corners. Your line will be straight, but then your corners will be off. So to get it right, you've really got to go slowly. So I hope you get something from this video because um, I think you won't see another one like this on my channel, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, so you see this tape coming up. If there's any blue paint underneath this tape, you have to wait until the, tape, the paint dries. And then you got to make a mark or some note, some index. You have to keep an index. There's more than 30 of these boxes. You have to keep some form of of making, you see on the bottom right there, there's blue paint on it. So you have to make, you have to have a, a system whereby you know where you have to go back and, and uh, touch up. And so you may resort to just a, a note on a, on a piece of paper or a piece of tape on the affected area, but you see it's all wet there. So a piece of tape isn't going to help you out while you get this tape off, so to keep it fresh in your memory. So you might think it's silly, you'll keep a note. Well, when you get to the end of the job and you forget a day or two later where you have to go back, oh, you'll be sorry you didn't make a note. See, See how beautiful that looks? So keep a record of where you have to go and touch up. What you're seeing me using there to expedite the process is a four inch purdy, P U R D Y, half inch nap roller. You'd be silly not to use a roller inside those picture frame moldings. And so we do. Wouldn't it be great if we could find a roller to fit every single width? Like right in there. I mean, you could do that on the edge, but what I mean is in between those moldings, it'd be nice to have a little roller. 
so we we uh, continue to persevere as we go through the uh, the task. I just want to speed this up and show people what's involved. Uh, it's a little repetitive, but you know what? For the new painter, I get a lot of people now subscribing who are painters and they enjoy this detail. A lot of work. Gotta have a cloth in your hand. You're going to get color onto your white or the white onto your color. Patience, patience, and more patience. In the end, this is what you're going to have. A beautiful finish. If this is your first time doing it, you'll do it perfectly. Break it down into a couple of days. Otherwise, you'll drive yourself crazy and you won't get the precision that you're capable of if you go over a few days. Okay, I'm going to continue. I'll show you the end result. During the video, before you might have seen me rolling this way, then this way, as long as you finish in the same direction. That's what's important. What I'm talking about in the video is you don't want to just finish off in any direction, diagonal, up, down, left to right, right to left. Your finished stroke has to be consistent within that box. And so you may choose left to right, or you may choose right to left, but it has to be in the end, it has to be all the same. It has to be all right to left, or all left to right, or all top to bottom. You don't want to be using a roller or any applicator haphazardly. You know what I mean? So you want to be consistent with the final stroke. The, the initial stroke doesn't matter. You want to get that paint in. You may have to go sideways you know, depending on what you're painting. But in the end, it all has to be the same stroke, the same direction, all of them. If you, ha if you have to do, say, six strokes along this, this inside of this picture frame molding, all of those six strokes have to be the same, top to bottom, top to bottom. And of course, when you're using a roller, you want to overlap each stroke by 50 percent. I'll put it in English. Uh, this is a pain in the... Okay, so you take, make believe this is 10 inches wide. Put it right in here. You dip your brush, you knock all of the paint off that you can. Make believe this is 10 inches. Let's say you got the blue on the white. You put it right up against there. Perfection. But you have to make sure you don't have, that the paint is barely there on the brush. So you dip it. And you're coming up with a brush that barely has paint on it. And you're just doing one of these lightly. You make the straight line just by the speed of the brush. Brush, brush. I highly recommend anybody watching my channel that they watch painting and decorating. There are two veterans in Ireland. They're, they're excellent. And um, I just enjoy watching these guys. And they're really good at what they do. I don't know their names. But they just published a video juggling. One of the guys was juggling. <laughs> I just thought it was funny because the guy never jokes around. He's got a, uh, a real, you know, serious way about him. Okay. There you have it. Just show them. I'm going to step away from the wall. Let them enjoy 
what they're going to do in their own house. Because they're going to be able to do the same exact thing. Now you can show them from a distance. I want them to enjoy it like from a distance so that they can see how that's going to look. See that? Beautiful, right? Now you can zoom in a bit. Oh, I just saw something. You see under the outlet? I see it. Friends, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. In fact, if you use my hashtag, Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, they'll be sure to give you a 10% off at your checkout. No matter how much you order, they have a wide selection of wallpaper. Check it out. Tell them I said hello and enjoy your discount. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the video. One, I have a tube of caulking. I use clear is your best bet because it's not going to make a color onto your paint if you should be using something other than white. So when we put clear uh, colored caulking in here, when I pull my tape away, you'll see a white edge. But if I use clear, it dries clear and you won't see anything. So I use clear for the most part. But <clears throat> since I'm painting up against a white piece of trim, I could use white. I could go in there and put white in there. And you understand that the tape against the white caulking, when it pulls away, you'll see the white edge of the caulking dry. But since it's against white paint, it won't matter. But if this were gray, and this were dark gray, you wouldn't want to use white because you'd see this white color edge of your caulking. So we go to our clear caulking and I have an orange piece of tape on the opposite side of the orifice. That's where my caulking is coming out. And when you load up this caulking gun after you start using it, if you didn't have the tape, can you tell the, the side from which the caulking is coming? No, this helps you move quickly. So I put a piece of tape on the side opposite the orifice. So I always know have the orifice pointing toward the desired target. It makes the job go quicker. Now what I'm going to do is fill in my caulking. Right? I don't want a lot of caulking. Okay? I don't want a lot of it. It's easy to go fast and just pour out a blob of it. But we don't want that. We don't want that at all. And so, with the damn cloth handy, you just want to take your finger. You want to take two because it gets starts getting caked up. Just make sure that it's sealed, okay? And, I mean, theoretically, you could go to this one, but this is what this rag is primarily for, to just wipe it off, making sure that you have a nice, thin bead of caulking. I don't run the cloth over this, because my finger lays it out perfectly, okay? Now, if you were to do it yourself, you see this edge here? This is unacceptable. That's going to change the whole appearance. So if you have to just wipe off your edge, but don't go near the corner, okay? You don't need a lot of caulking in there. You certainly don't wanna change the profile of your texture by putting too much and not realizing you've created an edge. See, that's how you want it. It doesn't alter the profile. Now let's paint it. We'll do the side and we'll paint the whole thing. I got a three inch angle sash brush from Purdy. We'll see. and thin. 
Wipe it a few times, make it perfect. Don't be in a rush with this. This is not something you want to rush in the painting process. Not at all. Now I'm going to use my red, which I've told the do-it-yourself or not to do, because I know I'm not going to press too hard and void the caulking where I placed it. Okay, so just be mindful of that if you do use your cloth. If you're new, I suggest you don't use it. Your finger can feel the caulking, right? Like I'm doing right now. Okay. It may happen that you don't get to painting this until two, three days after you've placed your tape. When you come back to the job, like I'm doing today, make sure that tape is attached firmly, okay? Because you want a perfect seal, okay? Okay, so, why am I not painting the top? because I can get in there really nicely without wasting the time. I mean, taping and caulking is a time consuming process that gives you the perfect appearance. Okay. But it's time consuming. So you just want to keep your brush underneath your bristles, or I should say your filaments. The hair on your brush is a filament. We often say bristles because that's the term that non-professionals use, but it actually, it's a filament. Now, if you've gone too fast or you were hanging over and you got a little paint on your trim as I have, you simply take the brush and wipe it clean. Nice finish. Okay. Now, I'm going ahead and putting a second layer on this. Nice and thick. Because here's why. It's a textured surface. And I don't want bald spots. You'll notice with finest paints, this will happen too. When your paint settles down, starts to dry, you'll see that it was completely blue, but there were speckles of white. The reason being that when the paint settles, it's literally settling over this texture and pulling away just a bit. Somebody's saying right now, how come he didn't caulk the side? Okay, that's a fair question. One, the angle at which I'm using the brush is not forcing the paint into my, my tape surface. See, I'm not going like that. Uh, I shouldn't even do that if I caulked it. But since I'm just going a parallel with this piece of trim, I'm relying on my tape to do the rest. Remember, if you're a pro, you want to do a perfect job in the quickest time frame. And so any area where you can save time is, is, a, uh, is something that you must pursue make your customer happy and it'll make you happy when you can get out of a job a day earlier than a day later okay i'm going back and forth remember i'm going over texture i want 
with paint to get into these crevices. Second coat. It's the second layer. Okay. Now, the brush I'm using is not as old as you may think. You know when you have people working for you and they don't clean it the way you would? That's all, that's all this is. See the way I'm changing the brush here? I'm, I'm, instead of flat like this, I'm turning it like this to get into the corner. Let's make sure that you can see that well enough. Whoops, sorry about that. I'm being gentle around my, my, um, my tape. I don't want any problems with that tape. Okay. So when I keep touching the wall with this brush, I'm gentle around there. Okay. Now I have green frog tape, which literally expands when tape hits it, preventing the paint from getting underneath it. I could use that if you want to. It's a little more expensive than your typical one inch tan masking tape. But let me tell you what's in the skill of this this issue right here. And that is making your tape straight, taking the time to make your tape straight, okay? Just look at this technique here. I put the brush here. I'm gonna pull you up closer. I don't like what I'm seeing in that camera. Let me bring you closer. So I bring the brush like this. I just, I just edge it into that corner. Nice and easy, and I pull back. You see where I missed? Nice and easy, that's the caulking doing its job. Okay, nice and easy. Okay, now listen. When I remove this tape, you're going to see a 95% job or better. I would say maybe 99, which means I'm gonna have some blue tape blue paint on my trim. It just happens, folks, okay? All right, don't panic, because that's when we do the final touch-up. I'm gonna show you what you do, okay? Here's what happens when we paint. Get frustrated, you get frustrated, and you stop before you're finished, because you're working, or you got a baby on the way, and you can't dedicate any more time to it. And so you kind of quit before you make it perfect, but you're completely capable of making it perfect, but you just don't because you're like, I can't do that. Yes, you can. So when I remove this tape and you see blue paint on the trim where the tape was, well then, I'm gonna show you the last step, which perfects it, that's all, okay? Now I'm going a little slow here for the sake of this video, okay? But, you know, when after you're doing this five minutes, I don't care if you're brand new at it, you're going to speed it up. You see what using the right brush does? Those bristles get right in there. Now, look close. Can you see the white? Look in the middle of your screen, you see that white? That's the white paint underneath it. That's the texture making my brush skip. That's why I'm asking you to go slowly so that you're not come back, coming back to a mess. Look, there's some white right here. You see that white? See that? Okay. Now, if I didn't look at that, I'd have white paint showing through, okay? I always paint around the electric very deliberately, okay?
we tend to shy away from these penetrations. But you know what? It's where the most white will show if you don't get them good. Even do that, get that brush in there, and then do that. Okay, the rest, we would be silly to paint with a brush, we'll roll this. Okay, I'm using a four inch wide, half inch nap, Roller from Purdy, P-U-R-D-Y. And your basic paint pan. Okay. So now, we don't roll walls like this, the way I'm doing it right now. But we want to get the paint in all of these crevices, right? Only you will know if that paint was missing there. If you roll back your video, I don't know, but that's what happens on texture. Okay. So now you saw me mash in the paint and now I'm going to do it in one direction. I'm going to roll horizontally simply because it's easier since I have this piece of trim here and it would be easier if I just deal with it in one, one stroke. As you can see, that's because I'm holding the camera. I got paint on the trim, not a good thing. Okay, so, but that's why I'm using, that's why I'm using the horizontal stroke because it's easier to deal with this trim and keeping paint off of it in, in one stroke. See, I'm done with it there. Instead of doing it like this, look, then you keep constantly dealing with it. But if you start horizontally, folks, you know you have to finish horizontally in the same direction. So as you can see, I go right up to the tape and I pull my paint horizontally. And in the same direction, you don't see me going like this, going that way. I could do this, look but I must finish in the same direction, okay? You want the whole surface to have a stippled effect. Let's put another coat on it. Don't forget the, the paint underneath was already this color I'm painting. So now if you're going from one color to a drastically different color, you'll want to see that your first coat dries before you start adding your second coat. Because putting the second coat on while the first one is wet, when you're dealing with opposing colors, will definitely result in you pulling the first layer off. For those of you who paint, you know what I'm talking about. And there you have it. We have a nice layer of paint on there. Going to just go one more time down here. Okay? Because we can't get a roller in there. And then that's it. I'll pull the tape off when I get to this next one and I'll show you the results. See that white underneath that? That's the caulking, right? Nice and easy, hold your breath. Nice and easy, go slowly, as slow as you have to, depending on your skill level. Just drag in one direction. Try not to speak while you're doing it. 
And you'll do a perfect job. It's really simple stuff, right? Okay, let's come back around the other direction, right? And this helps me cover both sides of those bumps in the texture that you can't otherwise cover if you go simply in one direction. You know that. Now, our corner, we can only go in one direction. You know, I can't get the brush to bang into the wall. So we examine and we make sure that we've covered both sides of that. Okay. When you're going into the sides, nice, straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down. Look at how I'm angling the brush there. Look, I'm just getting that, those, those hairs of that brush into that edge there. I don't want any pooling. So, let's get the caulking in there. Spencer, why didn't you caulk this already? Did you forget? I want the caulking to be wet. I want it to be, I don't, I don't want the caulking drying. And so I want to paint and caulk pretty much at the same time. This is a big question on YouTube. Can I, do I have to keep caulking? When do I pull it off? I'm putting a layer of primer on it the next day I'm painting it. Folks, that means you gotta take your tape off and paint and, and do the whole thing twice. Yes, that's what I said. This, paint I'm putting on in a couple of hours will form a seal. It's like a plastic seal. And it will go from here into the edge and over this and it'll become one when you go to pull off this, this, this masking. Well, you're going to have a problem because you've sealed the whole thing as one unit. So don't do that. If you need to paint and all of that, and, and uh, prime, I mean, and then paint. Well, then you want to do this process twice. If you want to avoid that, prime, paint, and get it all done quickly, all together. And then you'll only have to tape once. Yes, you can do it. You can. All right. ashamed of yourself for selling this stuff. Ashamed. See my last two videos on 3M. One of them says, don't buy it. The other one pretty much says, if you bought it, do this to it, don't throw it out. But let me give you an addendum statement. Don't buy it again. Okay. And it's not cheap, folks. I don't go cheap. If you go cheap with painting a wallpaper and finishing items, you'll pay the price later on. Okay, that's how we do it. Okay, that's how we do it. This is 99% done. It has to be tweaked up there. And I'll show you how to tweak it after it dries. Only after it dries do we tweak this.
Let me introduce you to an alternative for your taping needs. On this channel, we've often discussed frog tape. This is not frog tape. This is your basic masking tape, okay? But if you wanted to step up your game with tape, we have different types that are for different purposes. If we just use the word the words frog tape, it's a brand name and they offer several types. The two I have in front of me are green and yellow. Okay. The green frog tape comes in different widths, but it has paint lock technology. And what is that? Well, this tape absorbs paint quickly and then locks down the surface against which it is placed. And so what that means is, is that the tape itself absorbs the paint and when it does, it swells up. Okay, do you see that paint lock technology? It says it seals tape edges. Well, it actually does. And if you look on the right without paint block, you see the frayed edges. And then on the left, you see the sharp lines. This cuts out the task of having to caulk. But don't trust me, check it out yourself. I'm going to use it down here, okay? And I'll put it on my hand masker. The frog tape with the paint lock technology is now applied on my white trim. And if you notice, there's no caulking. I'm going to skip this perhaps time consuming process of applying caulk to clog my edges. I'm going to rely on the tape to act as the caulking material. You decide for yourselves how the tape did and then you can decide if you're going to invest your money into this product. Now, the same linear feet of the typical masking tape versus the green is significant. It's more than double the price. So if this tape will cost you $2.50 a roll, this is going to cost you more than $5 per roll. And in fact, it's about $7 or more, depending on whether you have a, a discount, the contractor's discount, etc. So on my right is the yellow frog tape and on the bottom is the green. Now we're not comparing the yellow and the green. That's not why I did that. I had some extra yellow close by and I simply wanted to cover my vertical trim because I'm not painting it. Okay. Many of you have liked the caulking trick, right? So if, if that's a time-consuming thing, especially for the do-it-yourselfer, it is well worth it for the do-it-yourselfer to go out there. Let's see how our paint did, particularly over here. Not so much over there. There was a little bit of a, a dip in the space between the molding and the wall. But right here, let's see how our uh, frog tape did. Folks, you're looking at the results that I have achieved on my tape plus caulking. Without the step of the time-consuming caulking, the issue with it drying, think about it. You don't have to worry about your paint drying quickly and getting that tape off because it has caulking on it. Look, you have some more time to work. You take this green tape off. You've got a crisp line, and that's without caulking. What do you think? Not too shabby, right? As opposed to this process, using conventional masking tape, And 
caulking. We have to make sure that we get this in right. We can't skip, right? You have to do it right. And you gotta be 100%. Not to mention the time, right? The base molding has recently applied urethane enamel paint. And therefore I'm using yellow frog tape. It's among the finest tapes available. And it also has low tack technology. It's not going to pull off your paint. And that's why it's among the more pricey products you can use to mask your trim. But it's worth it. How long do you want to spend at a paint job? How much time do you have? In painting, literally the tools make the saying very true. You get what you pay for. It happens to be very true. between the edge of the tape and my paint brush is a bead of caulking, which is clear, and that will help the tape prevent bleeding past the tape's edge. The smaller the fingers, the better off you'll be come this part of the job.
A quick tip for you here would be to use latex gloves when you're pulling this tape off because your fingers can literally get locked getting this stuff off of your hands as you pull it. Folks, this is the only way we can do this. It's tedious, but it's worth it in the end, as you can see.
Still got some touch up there to do on the blue. But look at how beautiful. Look at how beautiful that is. We've touched up so the paint is still wet. So you might see some color variations. So when you first paint the blue and the white, you're 90% done. This is the unfortunate consequence of having two bold colors up against each other. There's no way around it. And so I just want to show you how you can quickly touch up. Just come in close. I just want to show you how much paint is on this thing. It's not dripping. Look, that's what I touch up with. Now let's go in here. You know the paint is not going to be forced under the tape. That's why I show you how, how little paint is on it. Here's why. If you use too much paint, you're going to be touching up the blue again. And that's what you want to avoid. Okay. Remember, we're talking about textured surface. And that's what makes it difficult. See? I think I should have showed you what, what, how it was before we did it. But the the white was on the blue and now it's not and there's very little paint on here because you're not going to be using a lot of paint okay i'll show you how it looks when we're all done okay again we're gonna go in dark so to speak we'll call it a dry brush barely wet because we don't want too much right 
You don't need too much food. The right brush is essential for this job. See how pointy? See how I can get in there? You don't want too big of a brush for this job. And you certainly don't want it too small. Okay, that should do it. Bring them in here. Behind me, it's easy to get confused which color you're touching up, especially when you have two colors open at the same time. You might find yourself mindlessly painting. The white blue or the blue white if you're not careful and paying attention. So just keep the camera on that trim as I go and get myself a little brush with a little white paint to show them the details. Tape is attached fully. Really. 
I'm not crazy about the stiffness of this brush. Let me have the little scraper, Dennis, please. The little tool. We'll get it in. You can pretty much use anything. Very good. Okay. Don't always count on the tape. We're dealing with very fine details. Anybody can do this, except those who are impatient. Anybody can do this. If you can make a bed, you can do this. But, do you have the patience? That's the whole thing. You know? I'm done. That's how you paint this. And um, after you're done, you wind up with a pain in the neck from the tediousness, but it's very rewarding. Can you just show them all around? As they say, the devil is in the details. If you have any questions about the tape, the taint, or the brushes, or the other applicators used for this beautiful paint job, please just leave a question at the bottom. Let me know what you think. How do you folks do this? At first, I wasn't crazy about this, but after you perfect the work, you cannot help but to love it. Because anybody taking a look at this can see the time and effort and care that went into this type of work. Well, thank you for watching the video. I hope you like the results. Some of you come up with some pretty good suggestions for me that I begin to incorporate into the work that I do here. So please, if you have a different way of doing it, let me know. If you have a different tape, let me know. I want to use it. If you have a better way, a quicker way to get this done, let me know, please. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching my videos.